breast cancer. Elizabeth Cohen, CNN, New York. All right, so we're about to talk to two women who took that very same test, that BART test. They are providers, and they've never had cancer, but they have a predisposition to develop it. Well, a book out called Providers is out this week, and it profiles five women, all providers, and details the life-changing decisions that they have made. Two of them right now joining me from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, Rory Clark. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And Suzanne Sister. Good to see you as well. How Did are I say you? that right? Citer. Okay. Citer. All right. Uh, good. Uh, ladies, um, this is a very uh, difficult road for many to travel, but some might say to see that there is a test that can let them know, especially with a family history of cancer, that this really can be, uh, you know, show kind of the light at the end of the tunnel, or at least give you an idea how to proceed. So I want to worry for you. How enlightening was taking this test? Uh, how much did it help you make decisions about what would be next for you? Well, it was everything for me. I watched my mother die a horrible death from ovarian cancer. And then shortly after that, I watched my sister battle ovarian cancer. And she also has the BRCA1 gene. And after she was tested, and went through eight rounds of chemotherapy, I knew that I had to get tested for the BRCA1 gene as well. And mine did come back positive. Um, I feel so powerful that I have, and so thankful that I have this knowledge. And BRCA1 um, gene, just for some folks who are just hearing this for the first time, this is the gene that, of ovarian cancer. So you tested positive, correct? And then yes. what did you do with that information? Well, it's the ovarian cancer and breast cancer gene. What I did with that information, I started doing a lot of research and meeting with several doctors. And um, what they told me and what they recommended was that I went ahead and did a hysterectomy and a double mastectomy. And to be honest with you, I was completely floored. I was not expecting this. And I really was not ready to do something like that. And I did surveillance for a very long time until I knew that I had to have a hysterectomy. I had several close calls. I had two laparoscopies. And then I also had several um, biopsies done with my breast. And I decided I needed to, the following year, have a double mastectomy. So there have been some people in the medical community who have called that very radical when they've listened to yes. other women who have taken that kind of preventive measure, that preemptive measure. Now that you have done that, hysterectomy, mastectomy, do you feel a lot of relief? Do you feel like that is uh, the direction that you needed to go in order to feel some kind of comfort or some reassurance about your future and cancer? Oh my God, absolutely. I have three children that I need to be here for. And the fear, the, the mental anguish that I would go through every six months of doing surveillance, not to mention the cost. I feel so free now and I feel so lucky to be healthy and be alive after watching what my mother and my sister, thank God she's alive and well. But I feel so thankful and so less you know, worried. So Suzanne, is that something that you can empathize with, that you relate to, that you feel like this kind of preventive measure really does give you some freedom? And is it the case that more women in particular are taking this route? Or is this still what some medical well, experts think, call radical and maybe rare? Well, they could call whatever they want, but cancer is pretty bad. And I, if I could take steps to prevent myself from getting it, the information is empowering. I mean, the, the organization we both met through, facingourrisk.org, for, stands for Facing Our Risk of Cancer Empowered. We have power to change our futures. My mother never had that opportunity. She got breast cancer in the 60s, and they didn't even have chemotherapy then. But I had the BRCA test, I had my mastectomy, which I think is what scares a lot of people and why they think of it as so radical. But plastic surgery has come so far that I look better now than I did before my surgery. And I think if women know that, they would know there's nothing to be afraid of. It's, but was there some trepidation on your part initially? I mean, did it take you a while to get to that point where you said, okay, my answer is yes, I am going to do this mastectomy right now as a preventive measure? 
Not even for a second. You didn't hesitate? The, uh, nope. I, it was run, don't walk. I, I couldn't get into that operating room fast enough because I was nearing the age of my mother's diagnosis. And even though statistically my odds were not very high of being BRCA positive due to my family history, um, I on some very primitive level knew that there was a problem. And so I was actually really pro-surgery. Not everyone is. It isn't for everybody. But I couldn't live with that anxiety anymore. I drove myself crazy all, every year, every mammogram and just panic until the mm. next year wow. uh, because I was that sure I was going to end up the way my mother ended up. So Suzanne and Rory, your stories are in this book, Provivors. There are three other ladies, Lisa, Mady, and Amy, whose stories are documented in this as well. What do you want people to learn uh, from this first-hand account of being a provider, Rory? Um, what I want other women to learn, men and women, I want them to know that if they do have a family history, to make sure that they are aware of the choices out there and to do surveillance and definitely go to Previvors.com and take the several, seven simple questions to find out if you are at high risk and you could locate genetic counselors, doctors, mammogram facilities, that you do have the power not to be afraid. I mean, this is a gift of knowledge. And Suzanne? I was very afraid to have surgery. Absolutely. It's, it is very empowering. There's nothing to be afraid of. Cancer is far scarier than what we went through. And don't sit around and wait for somebody to tell you what to do. No one told me to get a BRCA test. No one, I never even knew what a breast MRI was. I should have had that information. And I gave my family history to every physician I ever was examined by, and no one ever told me this. I found out on my own through the internet. And thank God for that, because I don't know if I'd be sitting here right now if, that, if I didn't take those steps myself and not wait for somebody to do it for me. Suzanne Sater and Rory Clark, thanks so much, uh, women, for your courage, you. for sharing this, and for being the providers that you are and sharing your story. Uh, appreciate it. Thank you it. for having us. Thank you. And, of course, in addition uh, to the book, Providers, coming out August 5th, uh, there's also a free educational iPhone app called Providers. Next Sunday, we'll talk uh, with a genetic counselor about testing and whether or not your insurance will cover it and this programming note, Empowered Patient, Taking Control of Your Health Care, a special by senior health correspondent Elizabeth Cohen. That airs tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern, right here on CNN.